I need to turn that on. And yeah. Woo, we're appearing. <laughs> there we are, everybody. Hey, everyone. <laughs> How are you doing today? Hopefully good. It's Sunday, raining here in Oregon as usual, although we had a yep. great weekend. Uh, I mean, a great Friday and Saturday. Friday we got and a lot Saturday of were yard amazing. Work. Yeah, I got some yard work done, yep. which is highly unusual this time of year. <laughs> Just a little bit. And uh, yeah, so we're here to teach Paul's painting. Yep. So tell us about your painting. Well, uh, do we want to switch over and look at the painting? You can hold it up. Oh, I can hold it up. Because we still have to do our toast. In Round it. one. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> All right. So, um, you know, I've, it seems like since we've been in business since 2011 with Vine Go, it feels like every year I've managed to come up with some Irish-inspired painting for March. It's and, true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And it's kind Maybe of, you're like part Irish and you didn't know I, it. I actually <laughs> am part Irish. Okay, I didn't know it. <laughs> How did you not know that? We've talked about it. Have this. we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, well. so I think this is the first time I haven't incorporated um, ocean. Oh, yeah, because you've done Castle by the Sea. Mm -hmm. And uh, you did the one with the Guinness Cup. Yep. And, what and do they the, call it? Fight and, pint and Fiddle. Fight Fiddle. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was a, a cute one. That was a hard one. And we had the one that had the Selkie. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and, and I don't know, I think, and I did a live stream last year on... That's right. On St. Patrick's Day. We had Day. Just, just closed for COVID. And yeah, and it was really a very somber evening. It was basically super somber. me talking by myself and painting and all that fun stuff. So anyway, so this is a, uh, I think this is, we have a lot of new subscribers this month, and welcome. Welcome. Con congratulations on finding us. And yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so if you haven't painted with us before, and or if you haven't seen us before, make sure that when you uh, are checking us out, make sure you subscribe to our channel so you get updates. I, I pre-planned a few of our videos uh, for next month, and you want to make sure you're subscribed so you get that notification rather than yeah, I think you can rely click on the, the email. bell and get notifications. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, so this painting is very much built on layering, and if you have the project kit through the subscription box, you can tell by you know kind of looking through the instructions that this is definitely a layering process. Um, but if we break it all, and, and the finished painting looks very complicated. <laughs> yes, when, it does. But when we break it all down and get into the individual steps and brush mark, uh, brush strokes and uh, and everything, I think you'll find that it, it goes fairly easy. It's manageable. Mm -hmm. um, the main thing is to just let it go. Let it go. Yeah. Hey, it's it's your turn to sing. <laughs> let's show them, uh, for you guys who get the kits in the mail, two projects a month. Yeah. Um, go box Art Create. Next month, you get really cool boxes. So we have one. It's like the perfect size for a pizza. Oh. But you're going to be getting art supplies in it. <laughs> we feel like really professional and official And now. it has like little messages on each side. Artsy delivery. And oh, it's got Van Gogh quote on the back. And then what does it have on the inside? It has some more stuff. Oh, inside we've just got little... Quotes and phrases and, and nothing else in it right now. See, it's perfect size for a pizza. It's yeah. just like a pizza. So anyway, so we, uh, we're we excited about that because it's like, ooh, that was a big, uh, for us during the It COVID. was a big expense. It was a big expense. <laughs> and, um, but but worth it's, it. It's something we've known we've wanted to do for a long time. It was just uh, getting to the right number of subscribers to justify it. And we're there. Thank we're you. We're there. We actually had wanted them for March, but they weren't quite ready yet. They weren't yet. quite ready yet. Let's go ahead and zoom in and Let's zoom talk in. about paint colors and all that. Yeah. Well, let's do a toast first. Let's toast to... Let's toast to St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day. Cheers. The luck of the Irish. Luck of the Irish. And we are over an Irish pub, so maybe we'll have extra luck. Mm. All right, going dark. Here we go. <laughs> Flip it on over. Okay, here we go. So, let's talk about, let's talk about, let's talk about our color palette. You know what that comes from, right? That's that old, like, cheer from high school, talk about our color scheme. You never went to football games, so you probably don't know. I went to a few. Did you? All right, so, what we've got is we have our ruby red, sapphire blue, white, daffodil yellow, black, and we have our special color of the month, which is Bahama Blue, um, which if, if, if you hadn't noticed, it's very similar. This is probably our favorite color. We purposely made that box Tiffany Box Blue. It's, it's Go Box Blue. It's a little bit different. It's a little bluer than Tiffany Box, you know. We, but yeah, anyway. So we're going to put this guy away. We're going to switch over to our blank canvas. During this process, if you haven't done this with us before, um, I will 
reference um, our instruction sheet that came with the kit on occasion, just you know, so we kind of know where we're at. Um, a lot of times when we teach, we freestyle, and uh, but we also kind of want to make sure that we are sticking somewhat within what we uh, have sent out to you. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our biggest paintbrush. Yeah, so in the kit, a lot of you guys got the brushes, the brush yeah. set. So I'm, I'm using the four brush set that uh, some people get with their first box. We've got a couple of our marketplaces that are included in that. And, um, and other people have purchased these. And so this is the four brush kit. We're going to use the largest brush. And we're going to rinse it off. Anytime we start painting, we're going to rinse our brush and make sure it's fresh and clean and ready to do its task. So if it's a brand new, you just unbox these, they're kind of crispy at yeah. first. They just, just, take have, your, just yeah. go like this. Yeah, just dab it on the bottom of the cup yep. a few times. Yeah, they, are these ones, I haven't noticed that these ones are real crispy. Yes, they're not. very crispy. <laughs> okay, cool. So the color we're going to mix, we're going to start by mixing our, our sky color. And one of the things that I try to avoid whenever we're doing a landscape is just a blue sky. So yeah, I know it's really easy to do that, but we're going to try to avoid it. So I'm going to take just the corner of my brush and get a tiny little dot of black. And you can see just a little tiny bit. And I'm just going to put it right there. I'm going to take a decent little dip of white. Now my philosophy on mixing colors is mix less uh, quantity. Oops, I'm using Bahama. That's not the color I wanted to use. Oh, if you guys <laughs> use it, it's all right. We're using the regular blue. It won't hurt if it. If you used it, you'll just have an extra, a more rich color. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to use Bahama. I like that, actually. And we're just going to go for this real pale color. Is that what you call happy little accent? Yeah, it works. Um, the black just keeps it from being too intensely blue. Mm -hmm. And and I like to have to mix little batches more frequently so I get a little bit of variation in my color in the sky so it's not just a perfectly blue sky. So what we're going to do next is we are basically, we're going to start in the outside corners. And I'm going to try, I might even, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to switch hands a little bit to get this corner so I'm not reaching over. So brush strokes all different directions? At yeah, least. so what we want to try to work on, I don't want to say necessarily avoid. If you're a new painter and you're right-handed, our instinct is to just brush in this brush, 45 degree angle. If you're left-handed, it's like this. Uh, we want to try to mix it up. I've actually got enough color. So I'm kind of working around this central area because as we work in, and this is not something that I put in the instructions, so here I'm veering away from the instructions already. Just Jerk. a little bit, <laughs> right? What I'm going to do is to stretch this color a little further. I know you get terrible glare from when you're sitting in the passenger seat. Mm -hmm. Well, I was just trying to see what you were doing. Your hand was in the way. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna I guess kinda, I could just check the monitor. Just going to kind of work around here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use white now. Just pure white. I'm Are not, we just going about halfway down the canvas then? Yeah, about halfway down the canvas. And I'm not cleaning my brush yet. I'm just taking pure white. I'm letting the color that is on the brush uh, come along for the ride. And letting this brush out into my sky so it kind of blends and mixes and it gives us a nice little um we'll call it a light glow in the middle so basically we're going to keep working and get this whole top half of this canvas covered with paint now sometimes when you're doing this you'll get little little lines that happen from your starting your brush and you're stopping. If you get that, just take your brush very lightly and brush back over that area. And then the other thing that I think it helps on this particular painting, um, and just in general with the style of the way I teach, is instinctively we always are gonna wanna blend everything out perfect and smooth. Um, in this part, typically my paintings are not done that way. I like to make it choppy because blending is actually hard to do. So let's just remove that thought process from thought process from the equation and just let it be blotchy and uneven. I'm going to pull a Jenny and I'm going to do high tech zoom. You can see <laughs> I've got like so high tech, so advanced. Our son would call it high tech. 
And then he would laugh. But... He'd call it ultra modern. Mm uh-huh. hmm. All right. So we've got some fun new products that we're going to be adding to the website this week, and we'll shoot some product videos for those. Like yeah. little unboxing videos. Not a little five minute. They're just thing. a novelty. Little novelty things. Little mugs. Fun and, things. Yeah. We talked about it on another video. Yeah, last week. Bob video. Ross magnet. You can dress them up in punk yeah. rocker clothes. <laughs> Lots of fun stuff. So I'm going to keep mixing in the same area because I want to kind of keep my tones kind of together. And what we're going to work on now is clouds. Um, and the one thing that my, my number one piece of advice always when painting clouds is don't think about clouds when we're doing it because we have a tendency of creating these awesome little iCloud cloud logos um, and getting a little bit too graphical and detailed. And we want these to be just loose and wispy. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the same spot where we're mixing before and I'm going to take a little tiny dab of red. And I'm going to take a little bit of Bahama with this and a little bit of our sapphire. And what we're mixing up is we're mixing up the reason I wanted to use that ex existing color is I want it to be, have that black still um, having some impact on what's going on. So we wanna, don't necessarily wanna have to add black, but we're going for this, this kind of like grape bubble gum, but a little bit lighter, you can add some white, but it needs to be a little bit darker than your sky. So I'm just adding a little bit more blue. Do you want it more, of a red lavender or a blue lavender? I would lean towards the blue and lavender. Okay. Yeah. So it, that's the the downside of working uh, this way versus in person is I can't come and look at your painting and tell you if it's the right color. So you're <laughs> going to have to really like uh, trust yourself that you're getting your colors right. Um, it's really a periwinkle kind of color. If you remember the periwinkle crayons from back in the day. Yeah. And, it's one of my favorite um, colors. When, I'm just going to pull the sheet up. Uh, actually, let me grab the original painting. That might be more handy. All right, so here we go. Uh, this, these clouds are actually very loose and wispy. So um, these ones are actually a little bit redder in my painting, but that, that's okay. Um, what I want to do is, is we start, when you're looking out across a landscape, uh, a vast area like this, when you're really low to the horizon, Clouds kind of have a fairly flat horizontal underbelly, and then they build up. And then as you work, which is work up the canvas, which is working closer to you, you might see more of the puffy, cloudy kind of look. So, um, but sometimes, usually when you're looking at a canvas, you're looking far enough out that you're still seeing those bottom lines. So I'm just going to take a little bit of paint. So I'm going to wipe off extra. And none of this really matters where you put it because we're going to be painting over and I'm going to start out with my bottom edge. And then I'm just going to kind of swirl the brush. And it's okay if it mixes with the paint on your canvas. It's just going to be softer. You know, maybe when you're lower on the canvas like this, maybe you get a little bit smaller clouds. It doesn't matter. You can use a smaller brush, it just takes longer. So we're getting a little bit softer clouds this time, and that's okay. If you want yours to be a little darker, just add a little bit more of that, those blue and red. Those are gonna be how you darken these up. And you can even just kind of dab your brush along the edge to soften it and give it that kind of wispy cloudiness. The, thing you really want to pay attention to is while you're doing this is that you don't end up creating I'm actually gonna add a little bit more darkness to mine you want to make sure that you're not just repeating the same cloud over and over again it's really easy to fall into that I'm sure you've experienced that in class before yeah definitely I've, I've done that I, when you said that I realized that's what I was doing <laughs> oops yeah, and you can throw some smaller clouds. You can add some, if you do mix up some darker paint, paint and you can add some in, in and around. The main thing is, is I really feel like when we paint clouds, we want to be really, like I hold the brush really as far back as I can, and I try to be really loose with the movements, because clouds are loose. I mean, they're not a solid object. They're vapor that's blowing all around and being affected Maybe get a couple clouds that actually hang out and exist on their own. 
but we're kind of just sticking with this formula of kind of a flat bottom edge. Billowy top. And a billowy cottony top. And you can kind of take your brush, you can dab it. Did you see Greta was making clouds to hang I in her did. bedroom? I did see that. And she was figuring out ways. That's da Greta is our daughter. She is almost 15. She'll be 15 next month. And she is figuring out ways to put lights in the clouds so that they can light up too. They were looking really cool. Like there's something she could probably sell on some craft site like Etsy. And you should tell her. So this is something that um, you can be as cloudy as you want. You can be as leave it alone as you want. Um, you can have an Irish sea gale. <laughs> you could leave the clouds out altogether. Oh, great. Thanks for telling us that now, Paul. <laughs> um, but it, it, if you'll notice, it's like it's really a, a rough process. And if you really watch my hand, there's not a lot of detailed movements going on. I do like to have at least one of these get up into the corner of the canvas and feel like it's going off both the side and the top. I think that's one of the things that's really important, especially with doing landscapes, is to make it feel like whatever you're painting isn't just contained within the canvas itself. Make it feel like it's going all the way around the earth and coming back on the other side of the canvas. That's pretty dramatic, but <laughs> I think about things like that. Mm -hmm. right. So you can see, I've got a, like my original painting, the clouds were a little bit on the redder side. That's okay. It's all totally fine. We can come back and, um, actually these clouds are probably the least detailed clouds I've ever done in a painting because it's really just I a noticed that. They were one and not done. Not quite like the ones that you do usually. Yeah. So we can come back later if you want to add. I, I think that it's really, the rest of the painting's detailed enough mm -hmm. that it's, but it's really, um, it's easy to fall into this trap idea of I'm going to detail the heck out of these clouds. And I think a lot of times it's better to just kind of let them you be there. You know what they are. You look at it and you go, oh, those are clouds. Okay, I got it. I figured it out. Yeah, a little bit different. But this is going to, this is the way painting works. Every time it's a little bit different. Um, what we're going to do next is we're just going to keep moving. This painting actually is really laid out to kind of keep moving. Um, without taking a break, I'm going to take a little sip. <laughs> You're going to take a sip. A what are you sip. drinking tonight? I am drinking Fuzztail Fuzz uh, Hefeweizen from Sun River Brewing in Oregon. Mm. And it is an interesting Hefeweizen. I'm not typically a Hefeweizen person, but this one's almost creamy in a good way. All right, mm. back to painting. Beer is fun to talk about, but we're talking about painting. <laughs> All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna keep working. We're basically, we're going to underpaint all of this lower section of the painting with a deep violet color. Let me go deep violet color. <laughs> and um, I'm just gonna keep mixing where we've been mixing. And I'm just gonna go heavy with my red and my blue. Probably about equal parts. Um, and then the other thing I'm gonna do with this is to keep it from being quite so intensely violet. If we were to look at a color wheel and you look at fine violet on the color wheel and you go straight across, what we find is yellow. Because your color wheel would be red, blue, yellow, what's in between, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of yellow and, and when you go straight across the color wheel and you add the color from straight across, what it does is it tones down the intensity of the color you're mixing it with. Um, so this brings it into a little bit of a, doesn't take a lot. Um, it's gonna graze it out a bit. It grays it out, but it can also add a slight hint of uh, a greenish undertone, mm -hmm. which is kind of what we want to do. So you started with a pretty color, but we're kind of making it a little less pretty right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we don't want it to be overly intensely purple. Yeah. Okay, but what we want it to be is a great foundation for green. All right, let's do it. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to come, um, you know, you can come right along, right about the middle. And I'm going to end up going up over my clouds, and that's okay. The clouds are just going too. down below the horizon. That's the way it works. I'm going to let it scoop a little bit down 
on from the left, then meander its way, and then the far right, say, third of the canvas, I'm going to let it come up. And this is actually going to go up into my cloud here, creating myself a nice little flat castle, area. Castle foundation. <laughs> yeah. We can create some more. The castle is actually really fun to paint on this. Um, we'll get into it in just a second because the nice thing about painting the ruins is it can be a mess. It can be ruined. It can be totally ruined. <laughs> All right, so I just kind of want to paint in this smudginess. Uh, so I have a question about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, were you inspired by a photograph or? I, you know, whenever I paint a landscape, I always use some form of reference. Mm -hmm. um, it's very rare that I actually just paint 100% from my brain. Occasionally it happens, but um, usually like if I'm painting like say, I usually use more multiple references because I don't like just looking at a photo and being like, I'm yeah, just going to copy that photo. Yeah, that's You borrow, you borrow yeah. ideas from so different I'll, things. So I'll look at like, oh, what's a cloudy sky look like? Okay, here's a cloudy sky. And I like this one. And I like this particular castle. And I like this particular, um, like the, the stone wall in this was totally out of my head. Mm -hmm. You know, that wasn't something I found online. But, you know, we know that Ireland's famous for its stone walls and stuff like that. So yes, I used some reference, but I didn't copy a castle. I just kind of looked at the general feel. Um, and I'm actually gonna switch brushes. I'm gonna switch to, what is this? Number eight, yeah, that's your number eight. Number eight, which is about. It's your second, lar sec second largest, even though it's pretty small. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty small. Um, if you have a brush that's just kind of in this quarter inch, I mean, you could do this with the big brush too. Um, it really doesn't matter. Um, but we're going to start working on this castle. All right. All right. So the castle is really simple. I'm going to pull up the original painting here. And you can see it's it's really very... I'm going to just do a spiky and toothy. Jenny zoom. <laughs> here we go. It's just spiky, and it really is more about where we put highlights and shadows later. Mm -hmm. um, there is one spot where... I've got kind of like a uh, kind of traditional roof line here. I did look, it's like, I was looking at one of the castles, the castle I was looking at had like a church mm. that was part of it. And that would be really normal for castles mm -hmm. of that era to be built around a church. Um, yeah. And all I really start doing is, as I'm just gonna start taking some little choppy brush strokes and I'm thinking like, okay, this is my castle wall and it's broken. And sometimes I'll turn my brush a bit. Um, but we really want to kind of get these geometric impression of kind of squared off stones. Let's go ahead and throw a, a castle tower on here. Let's go right about like here. And I just kind of use like the width of my brush. You can have like spires and stuff. Yeah, you can kind of, if you want to use a smaller brush, but. You can use a thin edge. You can use the thin edge. You, yeah, exactly. What I would really encourage you to be careful of is getting too detailed with this. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you want to, if you want to pause the video and, and go to town, like laying out like this wonderful, beautiful castle, go for it. Um, and make sure you share that photo <laughs> yeah. of your I'm going to go ahead and, and give my, my little church its little, the cathedral, I guess, its little V shape. And you could, I mean, this castle is, can be as big or as little as you want. But really think about these parapets. That's a great word. That's right. I was trying to think of the word. Yeah. So this great lord used to sit up in his castle, gnawing on a turkey leg, watching <laughs> all the serfs in the valley before below enjoying enjoying his trencher and mead yeah and his gout that came from it <laughs> and all those guys had gout they couldn't walk they're big old fat and didn't they call feet. gout like the the rich man's disease or something the king's disease king's disease that's what it was <laughs> yeah so you can make this castle i'm kind of feeling like the way mine's flowing i kind of want to make it like oh there's another tower here it, it really use your Imagination. 
But the main thing is just getting these little choppy vertical shapes that are clearly not trees. There we go. That's good. I'm happy with that. And when we, we come back, goes off the side of the canvas there. Yeah, exactly. And when we come back, no, yours is cool looking. Yours looks like totally like it's goth. <laughs> King's Landing in Game of Thrones. Whoa! No way. No, not quite. <laughs> if you want to put a dragon in it, go for it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I always feel like people are always like, "Is it okay if I do this?" It's like, "Yes, do it." Always, always okay. If it, if you, if it was never okay, who would of us, who of us that are artists would be artists, right? That's right. I'm gonna do our thing. So are we switching brushes? We're gonna go back to our biggest brush. Yep, and we're gonna go back to this color. If you need to mix a little bit more, mix a little bit more, um, and. And my little bit of yellow in there, there we go. And we're basically, we're gonna fill down to the bottom of the canvas with this. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to hit us up in the chat. Obviously, if you're not watching this live, um, we not, might not be able to answer, really. answer it very timely. But if you are watching live, you can post comments if you're not live either. We yeah. we check them. Yeah, we but we get a notification. We do, but it we might... delete the trolls. Just so you know. <laughs> oh no, you, YouTube kind of like picks those up for us and is like, "Hey, are you sure you want this?" <laughs> well, let's see. What did they say? Oh no, that person's a jerk. We don't want that comment. <laughs> so we tried to. I do always our... feel bad for the the younger like streamers and YouTubers, like they probably just get ripped to shreds by their teenage counterparts. <laughs> you know how we are as teenagers. Yeah, you know, I don't know. But, I mean, that's really putting yourself out there. I wonder if they, um, because they've grown up with it more. Yeah, then maybe it's not so, they have maybe a thicker skin, hopefully, because teens can be brutal. Yeah. So I'm, I just added a little bit more of the yellow to mine. You can see it's it's picking up some more green. And that's okay. All of this is going to get painted over for the most part anyway. This is just our foundation tone. So the yellow, actually, I painted a little on top. It just turns it sludgy. Yeah, and it's okay. This, you know, it's probably like sludgy, marshy area right here. A lot of people would um, just paint this black. as an underpainting, um, but I'm not a big fan of that. Black is just lifeless when it comes to adding to a painting. Um, it has its role, for sure. Obviously, it, if it didn't, we wouldn't use it. Um, but as far as, you know, so many times we can get so much more going on by using a deep purple or something like that versus just black. Now, speaking of that, when we get down to the bottom inch or so, as I just tossed. Oh no. <laughs> just tossed the color black under the bus. You're using it. <laughs> yeah. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the black, a little bit of black now, and I'm just gonna start right along the bottom edge here. I already brought my purple almost to the bottom. That's all right, just yeah, blend it in. It. Just blend it in, because you know what black does when it gets involved with this process. Oh yeah, I'm gonna take over. Like, I wasn't here before, but now I am, and you are <laughs> in my world. It's not as bad as the lizard in crimson. Uh, that's true. <laughs> lizard in crimson is like glitter. Yeah, you can never get rid of it. You can never get rid of it. That's the one color that always used to just haunt me in college. Because I had this tube of it, and it had like a little break in it from, you know, probably it creased, and they're metal tubes. Mm-hmm. And it was like always leaking out on something, or it gets on your finger and you don't know it, and suddenly you have a, liz a lizard and crimson on your jeans and you know what? your new painting, everything. I've bought three new pairs of jeans from that s since my last leak with a lizard and crimson, and it still shows up. <laughs> it's like a recessive jean. Hey, I also I wanted to mention that for those of you who are local, Portland, uh, Oregon, Washington. We are reopening Viango um, for some in-studio classes starting March 26th, Friday night. So we'll probably just do f mainly Fridays and Saturdays for a while. I think just Fridays and Saturdays. Yeah. yeah. And 
We're so limited on, on staff right now. We're actually having to hire people. So we, we lost actually... a lot of staff because obviously if you can't stay open, you can't stay employing people. So, so this is a good time. We want to kind of let this bottom area dry a little bit. So I think what I want to do is uh, let's go ahead and add a little bit. We're going going off the map a little bit here. Mm. Um, I'm going to take, let's go with that same medium size number eight brush. Give it a good rinse. When you rinse your brush, all you got to do is I'll bring my, my jar over here. You can really scrub it against the bottom of the jar and then just kind of wipe it. On the lip of your glass. And I'll show you. Here's my towel I've been cleaning my brush on. There's no pigment on there. There's mine. <laughs> Jenny's, you probably blotted some pick color I off did, your brush. I did, the original cloud color. Yeah. So we're going to go back to that original cloud color a little bit. Okay. And actually, actually, what we could do is if you've still got this color we were just using, just take a little bit of it and add some white. What are you doing here? Just making a little bit darker periwinkle. Oh, okay. Okay, and I'm going to wipe almost all of it off on my palette. Well, my color has a lot of yellow in it, and it's, it's not very pretty. Okay, if you've got a lot of yellow in yours, don't. I'm start, gonna start, start in your pool. Yeah, so it just start with your red and your blue. And I'm just gonna get a little bit, just a little bit of red. Did you add Bahama into it or white? You can add Bahama if you want. Yeah, it works. Mostly what we want is we wanna have something that's very similar to our cloud color, but a little bit darker. Okay. And very little paint on the brush. I'm almost going to call this like dry brushing. And I'm just going to start just the bottom edge. Just going to add some texture to my clouds here. Mine's almost a little too blue. I'm not going to worry about it too much though. I mean, technically, if you were really getting into doing clouds, you would do like maybe some just like really close to gray. It's so really clouds are. My tones are gray, but I, I like it when there's a little bit more color to it when we paint. It's just more interesting. The old landscape painters, it was like painting was like their Instagram. <laughs> They're like, let's throw a filter on this and impress the chicks at the bar. <laughs> what am I eating today? <laughs> it's more like, what did I eat last year? What did a I... A bowl of fruit. <laughs> on my journeys to South America. Oh, no, you gotta you got be like Paul Gauguin. Uh, he went to... He just lived there. He's like, you know what? Kind this is of. rad. I can wear flip-flops and paint. You know what he did? He brought a whole bunch of venereal disease over there. Oh, did you know that? Well, I'm not surprised. I read about it not that long ago. I was, I was like, wow, this guy. Good Lord. Well, they probably didn't have testing for that stuff back then. I don't know. Thanks, Jenny. You just kind of like ruined the whole chill vibe. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. No, I just right. like, whenever I think of Paul Gauguin now, I think of that... So there's our, our little bit of darkened up mood and clouds. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm here all night. <laughs> all right. So that's good enough. What I'm looking for is uh, you can kind of look at your canvas so you can see it's still fairly damp. But um, if your painting is really still wet down here, mine's, I kind of give it the little touch test real quick. It's fairly dry in where we started. Um, and actually what we'll do is we'll give this a little bit more time. We'll start working our highlights on our castle. Yeah. So I would actually recommend using a good small brush. Not like a fine liner, but what's this we got? What's this size? This is a number four. So I'm gonna use this little brush. It's about, eh, about a quarter inch wide, maybe a little bit less. And if you're just stumbling across, I got to do this because our videos are long. So I got to point out, you know, and you're wondering, hey, how do I do this? Well, you can go to our website at gobox.com and order the kit. Um, we have a subscription box and that's so this is the airing date for the subscription box. But once this is aired, the kits are all available. As uh, like you can buy, as, pick and choose single mm -hmm. painting out of it. Yep. So this one is available for purchase on the website now, I believe. Is yep. That, yeah. So, okay, so what we're going to mix up is we're going to mix up kind of a um, grayish taupey color. All right. Mm, so probably what I'm going to start off with was, is just a tiny bit of red. 
I don't want to get too red with this, but we're going to use red and Bahama. And again, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, throw it in here. And I want this, anytime I mix a color like this, I am going to test it. Red, Bahama, and yellow, you said? Yep, just a little tiny bit of yellow to, again, tone it down. Um, this is kind of like a, just kind of a dirty gray color, I guess. I don't know, what would you call this? Yeah, it's kind of um, just like a dirty yours gray. Yours is different than mine. So I yours is a little bit more yellow in there. Yeah. Um, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll just test it. and Because when you mix it on the white, you're seeing it against white, so it always looks darker than it's going to look when you put it on, say, this castle here. Okay, so mine's a little bit, could be a little bit lighter. I'm just going to add a little bit of white to it. And I'm just, you don't need a lot of this color. There we go. So it's, you know what, wait, what I would almost call this is like, there's this color, it's called like oyster gray. Hmm. It's almost like oyster gray. And I'm just going to kind of take some of this color and dab it on kind of some of these shapes. And it's again, I'm not really detailing the heck out of this stuff. I'm just kind of adding some glinty highlights. Adding some highlights on the right hand side. You can add some going across, like maybe this is the top of a wall going across here. The keep. The keep. <laughs> All those, uh, Fantasy books that you have made me read are coming in handy now. <laughs> I didn't make you read them. I encouraged you to read them. It took a long time, and I finally started reading them. I was like, why did I like have aversion to this for so long? Because it wasn't actually cool. really interesting. <laughs> so I'm just going to do my fancy zoom. You can see it just... Little stuff. You can always come back. If you did too much, you can always come back and add some shadows back in. There's nothing wrong with any of this. You know what this you kind of reminds oh. me of is Mont Saint Michel. Yeah, I can bit. see that. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, look, the what what I would caution you against is as you work work from left to right, you're gonna do less and less <laughs> of the highlighting. Did I do it? I didn't make it. Woo! Didn't make it into my wine with my brush almost. So as I'm going from this side, I'm gonna have more highlights, less highlights when I get over here because it's more in the shadow, in the shada da shada da do. <laughs> In the shadow, da da da. Not karaoke night. It's not. Mm -hmm. Why not? Every night should be karaoke night. <laughs> so we'll, we'll look at my comparison. Obviously, my original painting. Now, it's, it's something you know. My new painting is actually coming just far more gray as a whole, mm -hmm. more blue, and there's nothing wrong with that um, because it's my painting and I can do what I want. So. <laughs> Maybe um, you're inspired by the sky outside. It could be. It's very gray here today. Mm -hmm. um, if you want it to have a little bit of a warmer vibe, which I think I'm going to do that on mine. Yeah, your, your original has more of a almost pink tone highlight. Yeah. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to add a little bit more red to this and a little bit more yellow. There we go. Terracotta, is that where we're going for? Yeah, kind of a little bit terracotta. And all you got to do, all you have to do is just kind of brush this on in on top this will actually help it stand out a little bit more because it'll this little bit of warmth will stand out against all this cool so cool man see that castle it's cool cool we're warming it up yeah and you can take a, a little tiny brush and some of your dark color that you you know mix up some dark purple and you can add some little windows Oh, that had a lot of water in my brush. <laughs> so if you guys have that happen, easy fix. I'm it just, happens a lot if you paint flat like yeah. this. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to take a corner of my clean, dry part of my towel. I'm just going to go pop and pick that paint back up. The other thing you can do is take a clean, dry brush. Just yeah. It doesn't have to be totally dry. Just wash it off and dry it on your towel. And and it'll wick it up. It'll work like a sponge. Yeah. So let's go back to a dry brush, a little bit of paint. And you can just... I'm using your little brush. Yep. A few little windows but make them tiny you know just a little dot here and don't little... paint squares don't paint perfect squares they're more like a little dash yep just a little dot just break it up there we go that's good Ooh, nice. 
Look, my, my towel is still just got, eh, that's fancy. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm very impressed with my towel skills today. All right, so our next step, we're gonna start laying out. So I'm gonna kind of tell you where I came up with my inspiration for how we paint this lower section. Okay. Um, the game of golf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very near and dear to my heart. It's been uh, one of my favorite things my entire life. Um, but one of the, it originated in Ireland and Scotland and in and around these areas. Golf, that's the game of golf the did. The game yeah. of golf did, right. And in the, in the game of golf, there's a term called the fairway, which is the part where you want to hit the golf ball, mm -hmm. right? Fairway, where that term comes from, is the fishermen the area in the ocean that was between the seaweed and the kelp and all the stuff that they could get hung up in was the fair way to get out to sea. Oh my gosh, I never knew that. So Look, we, guys, we learned something from Paul. It's awesome. So when I was designing this, co this course, <laughs> when I was designing this painting, I was thinking of, like, I really think of the fields in Ireland. If, uh, they all look like golf courses to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's kind of what they were. They were just the, the shepherds with their sheep hitting ball, you know, Hitting balls around with their... <laughs> hitting ball with stick. So I... The other thing is that I like to use blues for undertones when I'm doing something that's going to be green. Yeah, because if you look at the instruction sheet, which you should pull it over, yep. it looks like a lake at first. It goes... Yep. That's our fairway. Blue right through there. Yep. That's what we're doing next. That's our fairway. And uh, I'm going to use my biggest brush. I'm going to get it nice and clean. This Doesn't was have the to part be perfect. when I was writing up the instructions with you that I thought, oh, this is a part that's going to be scary. <laughs> yeah. Uh, out of all the parts. Yeah, kind of. I actually skipped something, but we have this other little hill that kind of comes in from the side. We kind of did that a little bit. A little bit. Um, and what we'll do is if we did skip it and you don't have it, we'll put it in in a minute after we do this. Because it actually kind of overlaps so ah, got it. all right so we're going to take a little bit just pure bahama blue not a lot mm -hmm. and i'm just going to start out at the top here what's the reason my bahama blue is like drying on the top really fast compared to yours no yeah yeah no mine isn't so i don't want a lot of paint on my brush because i want this to be kind of wispy and skimmy okay. and i'm going to start at the top here and i'm just going to start very moving my brush side to side. I don't want to get real bold, but um, this whole time, this is actually the way we paint water mm -hmm. too. I mean, it's the exact just same Just pretend process. you're painting water. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just going to keep my brush moving side to side, kind of meandering my way through here. And it looks like you left a lot of like dark, of the dark background through. Yeah, we want this to shine through because then we don't have to go back in and add shadows. Rocks and... We do Hello. want to have some patches where we do get some pretty dense amounts of this color. And we're just going to keep working our way down, getting a little bit wider and wider. So we get down into about the bottom third. We can really go all the way side to side. We can put this on pretty heavy. So I'm guessing that these more opaque areas. Those are the fields where it's going to be bright. That's where the green, like it's going to look like the sun is really hitting it. Yep. So those that's are good exactly things. That's exactly We want to get, we want it to feel like the sun is really kind of shining down through here. And you can come down to within, you know, maybe, you know, an inch or so of the bottom. It's better to come down further than you think you need to because when we paint the, the fence in um, or the, the wall, wall. <laughs> the rock wall, um, it's better to have painted down further and overlap. Well, in the worst case scenario, it looks like you could just paint some black right back over it. Yep, exactly. <laughs> well, and that's, a, that's just it. I would rather have this come down and then paint the wall over it than to try to remanufacture things. I don't want this to go all the way up to the top. So a lot of times we do something like this. 
Um, people have a tendency of wanting to take this all the way up to where it touches the sky. And I mean, it wouldn't be terribly out of place, but I think it having a little bit of a buffer is good. So a little bit of that dark silhouette kind of hanging out is a good thing. How are we looking on time? How long have we been live? 45 minutes, so we're doing really good. I would consider that we are pretty close to halfway okay. at this point. Um, but because uh, I'll give you an example. The sky is done. Mm -hmm. The castle is done. We've got our little skyline we're going to, or this extra little hill that we're going to bring in here. And let me look at the original one here. We're gonna kind of manufacture, remanufacture some little slopes coming down in, and it's easier to put this light color in first and then bring the other stuff back in right. um, for a continuity standpoint. So let's start working on that. Let me take a little sip of my fuzz tail. Fuzz tail. We went and worked in the studio today, so we just robbed the fridge a little bit. <laughs> It's not Couple stealing things. if you're stealing from yourself. That's right. That's right. So that's the the beer. If you guys are. Looking for a, it's very crisp and refreshing, and it's a nice break from an IPA without being too much of a pilsner or a lager. Hmm. Well, that's all beer talk. Yep, it is all beer talk. <laughs> okay, so enough of that beer talk, because we do have kids that watch these things, and they don't want to hear about that. Nor do their parents want me to want to hear about it. But water is really good. Water, you know, <laughs> I drink so much water, it's you crazy. You do, you drink a lot of water. Um... So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of come back in and mix up our dark color again. And this time, you can mix my red and blue and add a little bit of black because it can be a little bit darker. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. Red and blue and black and yellow. Yeah. And I'm going to go ahead. And the reason I like to do this is I... <laughs> do you have any wet paint there? Yeah. I don't need much. <laughs> Um, the reason I do this is I like to kind of build these layers by getting a little darker, a little darker as we come closer, which means we're moving our weight. Going closer means moving down. All right. So I'm going to come up a little bit above this where I started, and I'm just, just going to pat this in. And I am not a big fan of drawing these shapes in. I know a lot of people like to draw. I like to just kind of pat it in. Pat it in. Give it a little pity pat. pat. Pity pat. I always see that. I was trying to figure out why you were making it darker. Now I get it. Yeah. So this just is going to layer in, and I'm going to see if I can tilt this so you guys can see, you can see that. You can see it's a little bit darker. It doesn't need to be a lot darker, just a little bit. I'm just going to just kind of pull this color down. We're going to use this color a little bit more, too. Because if we look at our original, we actually have, see, we're actually going to bring some kind of a, almost a brownish, like, mm -hmm. you know how moss can be some kind of reddish brown? Mm -hmm. That's kind of the color we're going to kind of bring in to these surrounding supporting areas. But we're also going to go ahead and um, mark in... Uh, many of the fields have in Ireland have these small kind of scrubby trees. Hmm. So we're going to go ahead and kind of pop some of those in. Uh, Every time I look at that painting, I hear Damien Rice start to play. And so it is. <laughs> or Van like Morrison. <laughs> it would be. All right. So I'm just going to take some of that color. I'm using a slightly smaller brush. Oh. Okay. And you can kind of just use the corner. You could just use pure black for this too if you wanted to. It doesn't hurt. Just gonna kind of create some little, a little band of some trees. You know, this is the thing. Like you, Jenny and I met in college in music class, and we actually play music at home often, almost every night. Mm -hmm. um, it helps calm our dogs down. That helps calm me down. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just, this is just a real, I'm going to do my fancy zoom. Just a little blotty little area. Um, but I think one of the things that's really cool about Irish culture is it's still not uncommon for people to just show up at the pub with a guitar or a mandolin and people, or, and a Have a jam session. And just 
sing and drink beer. You know, there it's you like, go with the beer again. Wow, <laughs> or whiskey, <laughs> or coffee if they're not into it. Yeah. You know. So I'm gonna do another little section right here. Yeah, that was the one thing I loved about that movie once, once yeah. where they just have that jam session. Like, I don't even know whether it's someone's house or something. I think they were just at somebody's house. And they have but... spaghetti feed or something. Like, that is like the ultimate experience as a as an artist and musician. But you go to like Dublin, for example. How do we find those people? <laughs> you go to Dublin and busking. Busking is such a part of the culture there compared to... And not that I've been there. We got to go there someday. But it... Uh, we're bus- going there right now via campus. Where are they going there? <laughs> Busking is uh, street musicians playing, you know, music on the street and with their open guitar case and asking people to give them money. Oh, there's plenty of that in Portland, too. <laughs> That's a little different. <laughs> I mean, there are some, for sure. But I, I think it's much more of a, just an accepted part of the culture. I love the music, the, uh, like the, the musicians out in public that do that. Um, the ones that were near, like the Rose Garden, that play the buckets. The buckets, they're mm-hmm. just amazing. Like you could just sit there and watch them. Like who cares about the game? <laughs> okay, not really. I know you care about the game. <laughs> I do care about the game. You care about the game a lot. So these are trees or shrubs. Stands yeah, of they're shrubs. kind of scrub. Yep. Scrub. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of do one more here. And I'm just using pure black as this cl- at this closest one. And it just kind of breaks this all up. All right. All of this stuff is stuff that we can make adjustments to as we go. And you can kind of, when we get all done with the ins- the instructional part of the video, you can kind of go back and go, I'm going to play around with this a little bit. Maybe I want to move this. And I think that's one of the things that I like about these YouTube videos is people have that time to be able to do that. And I've seen some of, some people have done some creative little adjustments here and there. And I know a lot of you watch the video first and yeah. uh, then go back and do the painting. I think that's a great idea. It is a good idea. You just get to see us twice. <laughs> listen to our annoying comments twice. <laughs> Who's annoying? What are you talking about? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go back to my biggest brush. I'm going to give it a rinse. Hey. People are looking at my wonky tiger. <laughs> I had it done that way on purpose. I'll tell that story another time. Okay. All right, so what we need to mix up is we are going to mix up, we have a lot of mixing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to mix up this kind of, when we're talking about reddish moss and grass, we're going to mix this color up, and it's really just kind of a warm brown. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to use my biggest brush. I'm going to find, like this area right here, this is all dry paint, so I can mix there. I take a little bit of red. I used way too much red. About twice as much yellow as red. And I wonder, I probably used Bahama. Probably says in the instructions. It probably does. Maybe. Oh, yeah, kind of. Let's see. You can add a little bit of black, too. You want me to read and see? <laughs> nah, I got it. There we go. A little bit of black helps. Actually, I'll read it and see. It might not say it. I don't know. I think I got your exact color. It's in your original. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Well, I got it, too. It's just yours that's lighter. Yours is burgundy. No, it's not. Mm, kind of. So, basically what we're going to do is, again, less paint on the brush. And use a little bit more yellow. There we go. Less paint on the brush. I'm going to leave this area kind of back by the castle. Dark. Kind of dark. I'm just going to kind of roughly. This is kind of like how you do the highlighting on mountains, right? And yeah, kind of. Scrape it down. Just kind of smudge it in there. We'll come back in and we'll add some uh, highlights in there. And we can add some shadows back in if we get too out of line with the shadows. And it's really hard to see. I mean, 
Does yours show up a little bit more? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I, I added a little more yellow to my paint than you did. Now let's add a little bit of white. There. That shows up a little bit better. And it, again, we can just let it be a little bit choppy and uneven. I'm going to do the same thing over here on this side. And your uh, hill might be a little wet here. Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah, mix is okay. That's what I'm running into. Yeah, and the way you avoid it from mixing is you just kind of think about just setting the paint on top instead of brushing it in. Yeah, that's actually one of the most common things I've noticed teaching live mm -hmm. is that uh, you need to like really encourage that super light touch because yep. you'll get a real muddy color if you on your canvas if you just keep pushing and pushing and pushing, forcibly mixing these colors together. Yeah. So you can just kind of throw a little bit of this in in some of these areas and like, let's get, because we're going to actually add more yellow in here too, because we're going to give it, give these some, some more highlights and stuff in a bit. But don't make all your shadows go away. We need those shadows to just hang out and be happy. So if you get too much highlight, just bring some shadows back. Nothing wrong, we can play around, build, build, build. There we go, I'm happy with that. I got a spot right here where, um, oh, if yeah. you're not careful, and I'm kind of tend to be a little bit of a uh, sloppy painter, you get this highlight color, and I went up into my sky a little bit, and you can see it looks out of place. I got a little smudge over here on this side, same thing. You know, I, a lot of people probably would never even notice it. No, but I do. Because mm -hmm. it looks like a stain <laughs> rather than paint. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my highlight, or my shadow color that I've got left on my palette, and just kind of work over that, work that back in. Same thing over here. And if you need to come back with your highlight color, once that's dried, you can do it. There you go. So, now, we're doing pretty good. Time-wise, what are we at? Just shy of one hour. I feel like we've got about half hour, 45 minutes left. Because okay. a lot of what we're going to be doing from this point is glazing over. Kind of the way people get when I talk too much. <laughs> a little bit glazed over. Was I glazing over just then? <laughs> yeah, kind of a little bit. Uh, we've been uh, married for 25 years later this year, mm. and so she has a, we, she has a tendency to... A glaze out. over often. It's fair. Okay. I, I, if she didn't, she would never have a chance to think straight because I talk a lot. <laughs> The worst is when you, you try to... Do you remember when I was telling you that the other day? <laughs> do you remember that? <laughs> like, oh, so you're admitting you were uh, totally tuning me out. Sure, yeah. I remember, yeah. But can you re-explain it again? <laughs> Actually, sometimes it's like, can you tell me what I just said two seconds ago? <laughs> Squirrel. All right. So I'm going to get my big brush nice and clean. I like using a big brush as much as possible and learning how to manipulate the corners. and. You like big brush and you cannot lie. That's true. <laughs> All right. All right. So what we're going to mix up next is we're going to mix up our really vibrant green. I knew that what was going to be next. Yeah. And so what the the instructions um, probably just say Bahama in yellow. And yeah. that's probably true. Um, it probably wouldn't hurt to add a touch of the sapphire blue. All right. But yeah, we'll, I see we'll some see. teal spots in there. Yeah. So I'm going to start just here's my Bahama. Here's my yellow. It makes the brightest, prettiest green. We used yeah. it in the hydrangea cut painting last week. Yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit of my sapphire to this. So it's not quite so, yeah, there we go. Maybe, yeah, that's good. And again, I'm gonna kinda try to get rid of a lot of the paint. Um, and I'm just gonna start, yeah, it needs more yellow. Start brushing in. Loosely, you can kind of give this some 
areas where it kind of starts to creep up your hillside a little bit. I've got a, like so much paint, it's like trying to swim yeah. in Arctic Explorer gear. Yeah, definitely. Way back here. Wipe that paint off your brush. <laughs> yeah. You can use it a lot. You can use more paint down here, though. Yeah, see. and if you brush over, like, your little trees and stuff, it's okay. Just touch them back up. Add a little bit more of that. Yeah, just added a little bit more of our sapphire in here. But the key to this is letting it be uneven. So letting the colors not just be perfect and smooth. We want this to feel choppy and broken up. So yeah. maybe like you would see some Bahama blue here and there too? Yeah, that exactly. Okay. And in fact, you can come back in and just add some just pure yellow for now. That'll warm it up. That's kind of what we want to start getting towards. What are your brush strokes like? Are you going back and forth like you did when oh, you when you first it. put in the Bahama Blue? Or are you doing more of a dabby? It's more of a dabby. dabby. Okay. Kind of going back and forth and kind of dabbing. Because um, you think of it like there's like clover. And yeah, exactly. Four leaf clover. <laughs> shamrocks. <laughs> there's shamrocks in there. Yeah. And so when I get down into these closer areas, I'll let all kinds of different colors hang out. And actually, the more yellow you put in, the more it's going to feel. But the yellow, when you've got other wet colors on here, mm -hmm. the yellow wants to just kind of like disappear. So you have to be careful that you're not just fighting and yellow needs to sit on top. It needs to not be brushed in too much. Okay. We'll come back and do the yellow more with a um, smaller brush and... In some regards, you could almost just do plain yellow on here at, at times. That's what, actually what I'm doing right now. <laughs> There's some very acid green spots here. Yeah, that's good. That's what we want. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you get too acidic with the green, add a little bit of that sapphire to tone it down. There's a lot of times in a lot of paintings where I'll literally just take like our sapphire blue mm -hmm. and brush it in like I'm just doing right now. Mm-hmm. And then just brush yellow, brush yellow right in on top. But I want this to really pop. So anytime like where I just did that, so I just mixed up a little bit of that sapphire and yellow just right on the canvas. I'm going to take a little bit of this color and work it into some other areas. So I'll just pick it up off the canvas and make it feel like it's all part of the same thing. Good. Are so you, you see, you can see. Tea box? <laughs> yeah, right here. Um, you can see I've got this one little spot of just pure yellow right there. Mm -hmm. You see how that, I like that jumps? I tried to do that same thing. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this hang out and dry a little bit, and then we'll come in and we'll add those little, real bright pops of yellow. Um, and we're going to do a little bit of that up in here too. Um, I think a lot of times when we're painting something that's like a field, that's a green field, people try to use green too much and they lose, it just kind of becomes bland. Mm -hmm. And so when I put that yellow on there, you probably don't look at it and go, oh, that's yellow. It feels like highlighted green. At least to me it does. I could be it's where the pot of gold is. It is. <laughs> That's what but, it looks like. So totally. let's talk about that for a second. Okay. We're, we're, we're working you on You have this. one, a pot of gold somewhere? No. <laughs> um, rainbows might be the world's most difficult thing to paint and have look. Like a natural Like painting? an actual rainbow. You're not talking like an illustrative thing. You're right, right. Like if you're trying rainbow. to do like a, you know, like a impressionist painting or realistic painting... I don't think I've ever tried to paint a realistic rainbow ever. No, I mean, it's like, it's really hard to do. And then you see the occasional, I'm going to toss some graphic designers under the bus, but what's up with the people that do the colors upside down? 
Oh, yeah. Have you ever noticed right, that? Yeah. You see it all the time. It's like. I don't know. It's kind of like, like in uh, cartoons of the mailbox flag is upside down. Yeah, or back, or on the wrong. Yeah. Yeah, it's really weird. Maybe it's like a like inside it, joke for like, among them. It must be. And I, I wasn't invited to the party or something, but like, <laughs> I would think that most graphic designers would know that red's at the top and works its way down. I'm sure they do. And I'm sure I see it all the time. Reason. Reason. You could probably Google it. And there's I'm probably some out. answer on Quora It or really something. makes me <laughs> angry. But you know what I'm saying? You've seen it a bunch too, right? Yeah. It's like, maybe that's the way they look in Australia. You could ask Eric. He's a graphic designer. Eric, why are rainbows upside down? <laughs> what are you talking about? But it's, it's always something. I've noticed it like my whole life that for some reason and illustrations and stuff I often see rainbows painted upside down and it just it kind of drives me a little bit insane funny not like to the point of like having to you know call a therapist Need therapy or something, <laughs> something like that so I'm gonna uh, give a quick we're just kind of waiting for this to dry a little bit I'm gonna give a quick shout out to my parents for moving yeah <laughs> because they donated us these nice soft the chairs cushy, were in uh, you no longer have to deal with the metal chair noises that we always yeah. are telling you. It's just a chair. I promise it's the chair. No, they said, <laughs> these are, they said these are leather. I have my doubts. Hmm. I don't know. But they're nice, cushy, and they had two of them in there. You can see. It's bright. Oh, wait. You guys can't see me. Later on, we'll, we'll show they're you. They're avocado oh, green. Avoc but they're, they're the same color as this field we're painting. Yeah, really. All right, <laughs> no, so they're more yellow green. We're going to go ahead and start setting up our um, foreground area with our wall okay so to do that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my biggest brush I'm gonna take some black and my wall is gonna go kind of across here so I'm just gonna kind of think of the tops of these stacked stones Hmm. A little bit uneven. Like you don't want to be pioneer. too uneven, though. It's like a pioneer wall. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. You know, my uncle has a legit pioneer wall on his property. It's really cool. Did you ever see uh, our friends, the Johnsons, at their property where they had the old Pony Express uh, nope, station? Nope, I never saw that. Foundation? No, how did I miss out on that? It was like literally in their side yard. It was the foundation of what was the Pony Express. At their house? Yeah. Oh, I must have seen it then. But that, I, I mean, the last time I was there, I was probably like 22. Yeah, it was a really cool. time ago. <laughs> it was always kind of like the part of Oregon it was in. It was like you didn't really go running into those like little foundations and stuff because there's like rattlesnakes, rattlesnakes. and scorpions <laughs> and all that fun stuff. But yeah. I've Not a, too many scorpions, but there are rattlesnakes for sure. There's a few scorpions. How tall is this wall in the it's, original? Um, it's it's really like uh, like maybe an inch. Okay. And we pile up some flowers around it, I see. Yep. So we're just going to kind of blot this in. Mostly what we needed to do is create this top profile. You can use a smaller brush and kind of round some of these off if you want. But a lot of this we're going to... Yeah, if you think about it, all the rainfall and mist in the air is going to round those off. Yeah, well, the river, <laughs> they probably picked up off the beach. <laughs> all right, so that's like that. And then we're going to take our Bahama Blue. You can use this mix that we just used, and we're going to kind of just kind of pat in some grass along the bottom edge. I'm still on my wall. That's fine. <laughs> Don't put too much like detail into it yet. We'll get the detail from the highlights. No, oh, there's no detail, trust me. <laughs> Not at all yet. So then we're doing what? Adding Bahama Blue on the other side? Of it? Yeah, this is side? our... This because we're going to have grass. Mm -hmm. and this is like an old rutted road. Mm. And then we're going to kind of leave a little bit of black for the tire rut or the wheel rut. Leave for both. I was wondering what that was. Yeah. I, you know, it's kind of a, it's not a real important part of it, but it felt like there needed to be something. Something more interesting down there. Yeah. Just kind of make sure I've got a couple tire or wheel ruts going through here. Just like so.
You know, I would live stream again on St. Patty Day, Patty's Day, but I think my work week is going to be too uh, crazy, too crazy and exhausting. Yeah, because we have to get the studio we're going to. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, well, we've got. We made, we made a big dent today, so that was nice. So one of our employees had helped us move everything up from the basement, which was all our paintings stored. How many do you think? Three hundred? There were so many. I don't know. And so they were all over the studio, and she'd moved all the tables around and packed a whole bunch of stuff. So we're like, yeah, putting we're... it all away. <laughs> it felt so bad. She did all that work, and we're undoing it all. But, you know, we'd rather stay open. We, we weren't sure what, how things were going to go, with um, what Kate Brown was going to allow, or, like, ready to move out if we had to. All right, enough of that. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to... Nobody cares. <laughs> I mean, people care, but... Come on, they're coming coming here as a distraction from all that. They don't need you to rewind. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to just give you a lecture. I just went off on a rant. <laughs> all right, oh, so yeah. I'm going to switch to my medium-sized brush now. And we are now going to lay the yellow in. And what we're going to do is we're just going to get some yellow. And you can get a pretty good size, a pretty good size glob of yellow on here. Um, and I'm looking at these areas, I'm like, okay, I want this to just kind of sit on top here. Feels like the sun's kind of coming in and shining. And you can see if you just take a dollop. This is actually can be something that I think is, it works really good to do kind of do in two phases. Okay. So it's, if you see, if I take this yellow and I paint it on here, right? And if I keep brushing, look, it goes away. Mm -hmm. So... I want to just kind of... Gabby do? Yeah, just kind of slurry slobber. <laughs> is that a technical term? It is now. <laughs> Slather was the word I was actually looking for. Slurry slobber. <laughs> slurry slobber. Can slather some of this yellow in, and I'm not going to brush it out. I'm thinking of these are little high spots that are the sun is really kind of just kissing with a little bit of sunlight, a little mwah right there. <laughs> A little mwah right there. There we go. And we're just going to kind of let some of this sit in here. And then what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll just kind of take... Hit it again. <laughs> give it a little tippy tap here. And give it those extra little... You have to say bam like Emerald. Bam, bam, no, bam, bam. Pow. <laughs> I don't want copyright <laughs> issues. Pow. Crunch. <laughs> Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> Zam! No, I like crunch. Crunch. All right. Now, I'm also going to take a little bit of this color, and I want to just hit a little bit up on some of these areas up in here. But not up in here. Just in here. Just to give it a little bit of some extra um, contouring. Give it some sun kiss. Yeah. We're going off the rails here. On the crazy train. <laughs> totally. A little bit up in here. But again, not... Okay, <laughs> I can't do that joke too many times. A hangover joke. Not up in here. But not up in here. We don't, you don't want to do any in this background, though, because it's too far away. And if you put too much detail in the background, it, like, really ups the... Uh, then you have to put more detail in the foreground. You do. You absolutely <laughs> you do. do. And it, it really brings the expectation up that you need to do that. So I do like using a smaller brush for this type of thing because I do want the individual little brush strokes and stuff to show more. I always get a kick, like... Uh, in the studio, and you get you've you've had this. How do I get rid of the brush strokes? <laughs> right, you've had that question, right? Yeah. How do you respond to it? I'm like, you don't want to. I mean, that's what makes mm -hmm. it a painting and not just a Photoshop. I think what they're mainly meaning are those stop and no, starters. no, no, no. How do we get rid of the brush strokes? They want everything. You know, people want things smoothed out, and and I get that. I I understand that. And there's a time and place for it, but in you know when we're doing painting this, a wall. Oh, come on, don't be mean. I mean, there's there's styles of art that that's perfectly appropriate. Yeah, hyper-realism. Hyper-realism. But I think a lot of times, I think digital art has become so prevalent 
Oh, yeah. And they, you don't see brush strokes. No, it's pretty, pretty, uh, just smoothed out and, yeah. I, I've always wanted to try that sort of thing, but I don't know if I have the patience for it, honestly. But I've got that one I started. The one in Frog Lake. Yeah. I got about halfway done on my cat. I don't have time for this. That's it, yeah. I have to have a lot of patience. And, and really love doing that on the computer. Oh, I didn't do it on the computer. That was the, the hyper-realistic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you can leave, like, this little pocket down in here. You can leave it a little darker if you want, or you can kind of just keep brushing in this color. Um, we don't need to do any highlights on our trees that are hanging out here. We're going to wet let this dry a little bit, and then we'll come back in and pop some more of the yellow in. All right. So... What we're going to do next is we're going to take a little bit of our yellow and our probably a Same little brush. Safa safari, <laughs> sapphire blue. <laughs> we're going to bring our green in, a little more yellow here, in on top of our Bahama down here. And I'm, yeah, I'm just using the same brush. It, you know why? I mean, it's like you could use a bigger brush, but sometimes I just use what's in my hand. We've talked about this on the on the videos before, where you know p people want to know what brush to use a lot, and the real answer is whichever one feels good to you. Mm -hmm. And I, I always feel like because to like someone who's painted a lot, a big brush might be okay, but yeah, to someone who hasn't, a smaller brush feels better, more comfortable to start with. So I do kind of like let this bottom part of this where it comes up to the wall kind of be choppy kind of the way the top edge is because we've got rocks and stuff growing. I don't know how this would Moss look. Moss and shrubs and grasses. Yep. This side I'm doing a little bit darker because it's up against the wall so it's going to be have a little bit of a shadow. What did you it. mix with it to make it darker black? Did you just <laughs> I actually black added a little bit of red. Oh yeah. That'll do it. Or oh, just dark. Oops, a lot of red. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, or just a little bit more of the sapphire blue works too. So how come you wanted this part to be dark? Just because it's like... It's up against the wall. Okay. So it's going to be more in the shadow. We'll hit this with more shadow uh, highlights and stuff like that. I hear a ghost. Really? What do you hear? I hear something like scratching and scratching in the other room. No way, really? I just heard something. I don't have mice. No, I don't think we have mice. If we had mice, our dog would go crazy when she came in. Mm -hmm. She'd be sniffing all over. Mm -hmm. Might have a ghost. So again, I'm just going to mix in a little bit more yellow along this rut. We are getting so close to done, you guys. So close. And I think that this this process of adding the yellow, the build, to build, to build, to build our highlights, you could do this and just keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. And because the yellow is so translucent, mm -hmm. it, it's really easy to brush it out. But to me, it's like, it doesn't, when you look at this painting, it doesn't look yellow, it looks green. At least I hope. Mm -hmm. That's the hope. But every time you add yellow on to top of yellow, it's just going to license, license, lighten <laughs> it up. I think it's funny, like, uh, if you guys ever get a chance and you're on, I mean, obviously you watch YouTube. There's a guy I really enjoy on Bon Appetit. His name is Brad Leon. Oh, Paul has a man crush on I totally Brad have a man crush on Brad. Mm -hmm. Brad, if you ever see this, guess what? Yeah, I've got a man crush. <laughs> let's go fishing sometime. Um, go pickling. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Fermenting. Let's go fishing and eat some pickled food. Let's <laughs> let's go do that. Um, but he, he like stumbles on his words a lot, and I think it's funny because they like close caption what he actually says and not what he's meaning it's to like say. It's like a whole bunch of letters that don't like, like don't make together. any sense at all. <laughs> he's like blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he's really entertaining to watch and you know, Yeah, and he's he's got a lot of energy. 
Which his, is uh, really fun to watch. Like he, he, everything he does is fermented food, which is really intriguing. It's good for you. Bon Appetit, Brad Leone. We highly yeah. recommend it. Follow him on Instagram, too. He's pretty entertaining. He's not a sponsor, but... <laughs> so we live in, a, in in just outside of Portland, and there's a there's one episode where he goes to this island called Savi Island. Oh, yeah, and he can't pronounce it. <laughs> and they did this whole montage at the end of the video of probably 30 different times of him going, Suave, Suave. Savi Island? He never said it right. <laughs> That's right. Um, but anyway, so highly recommend it. All right, so I'm just going to kind of, what you can do that you can really get old school paintery is you can get a lot of paint on your brush like I've got right now, and you can just kind of let the brush just slather it on. Now I've got this area starting to kind of... It's like you're putting schmear on a bagel. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. Now I've got this area, it's kind of starting to dry a little bit, so the brush is wanting to stick. Mm-hmm. You kind of want to be careful because you can lift the paint back off if you run into that. So all you got to do is let it dry for another couple minutes and then you can come back in. So you can see I'm just adding more and more and more of this yellow. And it's just keeps building this notion that this is a nice, beautiful, sunlit veil. Dell? I guess it would be a dell. Remember that old, like, the Farmer in the Dell song or whatever? What is it? Is a Dell, like, a... Like, what's the difference between a Dell and a field? I don't know. Tell us that, Paul, you man of all kinds of knowledge. Well, I can tell you that... <laughs> Encyclopedia Brown. I think I used to call you that. <laughs> yeah. Well, a Dell is a singer. <laughs> but a Dell is also something that got a computer named after it. And a field has n had... Neither of those two things happen. None of what you said even made remote sense. That's okay. <laughs> you know, too much, we try to make too much sense of things sometimes, and it's just, sometimes it's okay to just let things be weird. Okay. Right. It's true. It is true. All right. So I'm feeling pretty happy with that area. Um, again, if you're struggling with that area, <clears throat> you can always mix up your turquoise color that we start you know the limey green you can bring some more of the darker green in you can really play with this a lot let's see how this looks compared to my finished painting you can see yeah that my finish is again it's my new one i'm working on is a lot cooler this one's got a lot more of these warmer undertones hmm. so but well, that one you did paint in here and during the daytime. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. I mean, we're, we're painting Maybe under artificial lights versus painting with real sunlight. Big difference. Um, and again, if you just want to warm things up, just kind of mix up this kind of tone here and kind of smudge it in in some spots. It's never going to hurt. You have to be careful when you do these warm tones, though. Like if I'm mixing this color up, a lot of times to lighten it, the instinct is to add white, and the white just kind of doesn't do it any real favors. You get pink real easy. Yeah, corals. You can kind of take some of this kind of color and smudge it in there. All right, so you had been really interested in how we do our rock wall. Mm-hmm. That's the one part, yeah, like I said, it looked a little complicated. Yeah, so I'm going to switch over to a... I'm gonna, well, I'm still going to use the same brush. I need to rinse it off, though. Um, be careful not to use too small of a brush. I think instinctively, a lot of times, we want to use a tiny brush. But this number four square is perfect. Um, and what we're going to do real quick is I'm just going to take a little bit of my Bahama Blue... I'm going to add a tiny touch of red to it. Just going to kind of make it a little bit lavendery, but not too lavendery, just a touch. And all we're really going to do is we're just going to come through here and just very lightly, I got too much paint on my brush, just kind of start thinking of we're doing the top side of rocks. We're not doing the whole rock, so there's going to be little gaps here and there. And 
the main thing you want to remember is this is not like they went to the garden center and bought cut, you know, <laughs> cut stone or or concrete synthetic stuff. All they did is they went and they gathered rocks from the stream bed and stacked them. Um, to keep the sheep in. Yeah, exactly. It's it's not fancy stuff we're doing. I do try to make sure that they're not like one on top of the other, off of the other. They need to offset a bit because if you ever have built a wall with stone or whatever, you don't stack them in a row. <laughs> you let them overlap each other so they support each other. And it, I'm kind of giving a little bit of a arch so it feels like it's just kind of a curved stone. You don't need to go all the way down, um, but you can. The other thing is we're going to come back in just a minute and we're going to add a little extra highlight using a little bit smaller brush. Um, try to make sure that you're varying your shape and size too. So again, they just went to the shoreline, whether it was the ocean or the bay, and they picked up rocks and they stacked them. So they, they're not all the same shape and size. I think um, the reason this, when I looked at it, I was like, oh, that's going to be the hard part. I had remembered teaching Amber Dream in the studio. So Amber Dream... <laughs> It had a lot of river uh, rocks. The whole painting was river rocks. Yeah, and I, I saw the process that was intended for teaching, and it was complicated. Kind of backwards in some ways. Oops, I hope whoever designed that did not just tune in for this video. That's why I'm staying quiet because you're being... I'm being a jerk! <laughs> Alright, so I've just kind of roughly put these stones in there. I'm going to switch now to a smaller brush. And I'm just going to take a little bit of just pure Bahama blue and just kind of give a little some little highlights here and there. And all I'm just doing is just giving a little, we'll zoom in, a little extra little tap of color here and there. You don't need very much. Um, mostly these ones at the top. If it's too Bahama, you can always, you know, lift it and tone it down a bit. But just giving us a little extra little dab of color. So basically our, our black was our shadow, the kind of lavender-ish color is our base tone, and then this is just a little bit of highlight, and you could do white, but white's too, I, th I think a lot of times when we paint rocks, uh, white's too stark. Yeah. It's, it's too bright. The two things you don't really see in nature too terribly often is pure white and pure black. Mm-hmm. And we have a tendency of relying on those two colors to do a lot of things when we're painting. And that's, you know, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. But I think there's little tricks we can do that are more interesting. Obviously, when you're reflecting... Um, I keep twisting my painting. Sorry about that. When you're reflecting uh, the sun into the water... For example, yeah, pure light, pure whites, as close as we can get to pure luminance. That's something we can never paint. We can never actually create light. We can only suggest it. Unless you want to punch a hole through your canvas and put a Christmas light in. <laughs> hey, there's some cool paintings that they do that with. Yeah. I don't like my rock wall. Just gonna say it right then and there. I probably gave myself anxiety over it. So, um,. What you could do with yours... It looks like a mess. I think it looks fine. Um, you could pull some of your grass green up 
into. Or <laughs> you mean cover my rock wall? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, that that okay. was just like when the cus- when I when you say step back from your painting once in a while, and the customer goes, "Oh, I'm going to go across the street so I don't have to look at it." You know, um, what you could do with yours, as I'll do on mine real quick, is I'm going to mix up some deep purple, a little bit of blue, a little bit of red. Add a little bit of yellow to tone it down, just like we did for our base color up above. And you could you could totally kind of brush some shadow in around the base. Mm-hmm. I, I think actually, that would I, I think, think that would help um, yours. I can do that. I mean, I think I'm gonna create a glaze with a little tiny bit of black and some water, and I think I'm gonna just glaze over it because I think the highlights are what are bothering me. They're maybe too bright. So I'm just creating this little subtle hint of a shadow along the base of our wall if you want to do that. So I just mixed up that same dark kind of color that we used in the background, used very little amount. This is optional. I don't think this is in the instructions, but I think it looks good. Um, Red and blue? Yep. A little bit Did of you yellow. put yellow too? Yeah. A little bit of yellow. Oh, too much paint. Yeah, that'll brush out pretty easy, though. Mm-hmm. All right. So the other thing is I'm going to go ahead and give the center area the same treatment that we did before uh, up in here is just kind of give it some yellow. We're almost done, guys. We're doing well. We're doing well. I know we're kind of hitting that for a minute, a minute, an hour and a half. And this is about attention span breakoff point for most people, <laughs> right? You and I were hitting s- super deluxe o'clock. <laughs> you know, and we had the time change today. Oh, yeah, that's right, we did. So it feels, what is it? We set the clocks forward, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, so it feels... It's not, it feels like it shouldn't be. I don't like the spring one. I like the fall back. When you set the, set the clocks back and you feel like you're sleeping in and it's nice and light in the morning. But in the spring, it's like suddenly it's really dark again in the morning. Yep, that happens. I don't like that. I think they should just do away with that one. <laughs> just like every year we just set the clock back <laughs> in the fall? So the, the whole time change thing, wasn't it... Um, Originally, just because of like farming and that kind of thing—is that what it was? School and it's just farming. Give yourself an extra. Uh, it's like, why don't you just like get up an hour earlier? <laughs> you know, it's like, do you really need to change the time? Tradition. No, I mean even then. Mm. You would get up so early. It's like if I need to go to work an hour earlier to get a project done, I don't change my clock. <laughs> I just get up an hour earlier. All right, so we're getting just about it, really. I mean, I just added these highlights on my... Uh, no, we, it's not done. We're, we're getting close, so... I feel like some of the tree-like things in my field maybe need to be... Yeah, we can touch those touched up. ...touched up again because yep. we painted around them, which means some of the paint ended up on top. Yeah, for sure. We'll do that. Um, Because I want to let this dry a little bit, so I just kind of added some of these little bits here. Before we get going too far, I want to go ahead and I'm going to rinse this medium-sized brush up. Up. Off. Um, And I'm going to mix up a... We need to make brown. I'm going to take a little bit of red. A little bit of yellow. More yellow than red. And let's add some Bahama blue. Let's add a little bit of dark blue. This is a good color, right? Kind of a dirty green. All we're going to do to you for this color, mine ended up being really army man green. There we go. It doesn't really matter. Just as long as it's kind of like a warmish, brownish green. I'm just going to take some of this color and just kind of nestle it in here. You can leave a little bit of your dark 
edge showing because that's the shadow. I'll do us all a favor and not include puddles. Do a little bit right in here too. So I just leave the le leafed. <laughs> I just leave a little bit of a dark line between the two so that it looks like it's a shadow from the grass being cast. If you want to add a little bit of white to this color. We can, hardly used white in this painting. Just in the sky, really. Mm -hmm. You can add a little bit of... Puddles? <laughs> no, just like a little bit of a lighter... Shimmer? Um, where there's a little bit of light kind of carrying down into this a little bit more. If you wanted to add puddles, all you do is just take a little white and go, oh, a little dab of color. You have to make the sound. <laughs> oh. You got to talk to yourself. <laughs> oh, there's a happy little puddle there. Bird. Oh, bird. <laughs> All right. So you don't have to do the puddles. I think it's kind of a nice little touch once in a while. It just kind of makes it, you know, breaks it up. Um, let's go ahead and touch up our little trees, little scrubby trees. Just use a little bit of black. Okay. I kind of always think of these as more like a bundle. <laughs> bundle of trees. Yeah. Bundle of scrub. Bundle of scrub is a good way of saying it. I don't think they have a lot of big trees in Ireland. I think they have... That's why they build all their houses out of stone and thatch. Oh my gosh, my favorite movie in the world is The Secret of Rowan Inish. Well, I wouldn't say it's my favorite movie in the world, but it's in the top five for sure. I love that movie so much. Jamie! <laughs> Came out in the 90s, I think, early 90s. Yeah, it was. That's a good movie. I like that one. I always have to watch it when I'm, like, stressed, because it's, like, a, it's a stress relief. It's a weird movie. It's neat, yeah. It's, it's really good, but, yeah, yeah. I watched it a year ago at the start of the pandemic. Got the order to close my studio and came home and right, watched Rowan Inish. Again. Good <laughs> lord, woman. You can't Rowan stop Rowan talking Inish. about the pandemic. <laughs> pandemic? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's as close as I'm going to get to swearing. I'm my bad, my bad. All right, so the last thing we're going to do on this painting is we are going to create some flowers at the base oh, of Oh, I forgot about those. <laughs> yeah, and that kind of helps soften your wall up a bit really and a, a lot of times we'll use the the back end of a brush i actually just kind of like to use the bristles on this um and uh we're just going to use our smallest brush a little bit of white and just little dots i like to kind of do little clusters that then just kind of trail out I don't remember what, uh, there's a, I can't remember what kind of flower this was when I looked it up. It wasn't, hmm. I was thinking about doing daffodils, but I don't know that they're super prevalent in Ireland. No idea. Like, I always think of daffodils as being March flowers because they grow like crazy here. Mm hmm crocuses.
I kind of like to do little clusters and then a few little stragglers because I, I think um, it's the same thing as like painting stars. We have a tendency of just like creating a repeating pattern over and over real easy. There's no HOA here. Right. These mm -hmm. are wild. They grow where they want. You could probably put other color flowers in too, like maybe some yellow. You could. Um, my concern is that the yellow would get lost in all the other yellow. Probably. So, just trying to keep it simple. And just keep little dots here and there. You can do a few bigger, you can do a smaller. I like to kind of get a nice little dab and just kind of work my way around. Here's a little cluster. Um, and just keep working until you run out of paint. Which can, you can do a lot with one little dab of paint. If you guys do paint this and, and uh, want to show your work, we love it on our um, Facebook group page. It's called Go Box Art Crate. It's not our main business page on Facebook. It's our group it's page. Group. You have yeah. to actually ask to join and we'll approve you and we get I send out uh, notifications of new product first there I try to most of the time and um, also we we always post our paintings and lots of the students and people who've been doing go bucks for a long time I really even enjoy new yeah I really enjoy when we get like kids from other parts of the world yeah, that's so cool. We've gotten a few from the UK and... That YouTube really helps us to reach people all over, which is so neat. I love it. But I, I, we got a message the other day from a grandmother who's teaching her uh, grandchildren how to paint. And she found our studio, or our videos, and she was very appreciative. Oh, that's sweet. And where was she at? Uh, I, she didn't say. Hmm. That's very sweet, though. Another one was a nanny. Great. Who <laughs> was having the child she was watching, or that she watches, was going to paint one of the kids' paintings to give to her mom. Very nice. Yeah. I need to do an Easter kids' painting or springtime, you know, bunny or something. Baby duck. That would be cute. We have a really cute bunny, though, and then we have a really cute llama. That would be fun to do. That's it, the drama llama? <laughs> No, it's a kid's painting uh, llama that Annalise designed. If you want to put it with some little flowers in this center, you know, go for it. Yeah, they would spread over there. Yeah. For sure. It's up to you. So that's it. We are finished. And Jenny's finished. And we're finished. I'm and we need to sign our paintings. I'm going to sign mine right here in this corner. Just a little bit of white. Small brush. I just do my initials. Jenny does just her initials too. Totally different way of approaching our paintings. A lot of people just sign them on the back with a Sharpie. Mm -hmm. That works too. Um, now, one thing is like, I've, I'm have sitting here with this little brush and I've got some white paint on it and there's part of me that's like tempted to just... Don't do it. Yeah. You don't want to. It's too mm -hmm. much detail. It would t distract from this. It would yeah. pull the eye back here. Yep, exactly. So let's... I'm going to move my palette out of the way. I'm going to move my paper towel. and go bop over there. And slide this as far over. And let's see how Jenny's painting looks. Look at that. They look a lot alike. I know. I'm getting like to where I understand your style better, which I like because I needed to loosen up in my own style sometimes. Mm -hmm. Now, so, the only thing that I see that's really different between the two. The rock wall? No. Um, is yours feels much more like a valley. Mm, okay. Not, not, it's a fairway. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, the tea box is right there. <laughs> yeah. It, there, yeah, there it is. The tea box is right and here. And there's the 19th hole right there. Yeah. <laughs> the clubhouse. The clubhouse. 
The, the gouty Cleopas. You've got a much more spreading fortress. <laughs> Mine's like a tight little, like, nobody gets let in. We don't we don't build it bigger. This is us. No. Yeah. <laughs> so, King's and, Land, and actually, to be honest, the way you painted your, I like your castle better. <laughs> because, and I'll tell you why. You like my big spire? But it's actually a cross. If no, you that's cool. <laughs> that's a good thing to do. Yeah. Um, but the reason I like yours a little bit better is uh, it makes it feel farther away. Mm, okay. So a lot of times we have a tendency when we're painting to uh, make background elements too large and then it make, it shrinks the size of the painting. Yeah. Shrinks the scale. I wasn't sure about this. Mm. I think it's It fine. could become a pond, actually. <laughs> you almost could, yeah. But yeah, good job. Thanks, Paul. You're welcome. That was fun. Yeah. So, you want to switch over and let's go. We go. Is it? No. Yeah, that Sorry. one. There we go. Let's come back. Hey, there we are. There we are. It's us. You know. All our painting glory. Yeah. Red eyes, everything. <laughs> you ever get done with like your teaching and you, you do feel glazed over? Yeah, totally. And then you have to like... Like always worried Bigger. that you get. Oh, you, what are we at? Yeah, mm -hmm. I always feel like worried and seeing like, man, they're gonna see my bloodshot eyes and think that we're like <laughs> doing edibles while we're teaching. <laughs> and, no, it's, but it is a uh, sitting down and painting for an hour and a half is difficult. Late we're, night we're on at, a Sunday. <laughs> we're an hour and forty five minutes. Mm hmm. Um, and then also trying to tell people what you're doing yeah it's, it's it's a little bit fatiguing thank you for joining in yeah. we appreciate all the support um yeah and if you stumbled across us and you enjoyed it and you want to show some appreciation you can there's a link in the description to our coffee page yep and uh, you can go there and buy us a coffee we appreciate it yeah we appreciate that a lot and um I don't know what our next painting will be. It's something soon, definitely, because we, we feel like making videos on a regular, off, more often than the Go Box basis is really good. Yeah. And uh, so when we I'm start sure. finding some sanity in the world, mm -hmm. then we'll, uh, our goal is to do at least one video a week. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, we're going to sign off. We're going to go get some food. We enjoyed painting with you guys. Post, uh, Join our Facebook group. It's called Go Box Art Crate, and we'll we'll prove you on there. Post your paintings, or even just uh, talk about what you you don't have to post a picture. Just post what you thought about the painting, or what what part was hard, or what part you really liked doing. Yeah, I like it. Like it helps us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, we're while we're teaching you, we're still, you know, everybody interprets things differently, and sometimes it's nice to have good feedback on like, hey, this made sense, this didn't make sense. Um, yeah. And it's important for us to be able to get that feedback so that we can... And give us suggestions. I know a lot of people have given suggestions. Mm -hmm. I've sort of filed them all in my mind, and I, I intend to get to a lot of them. You've got a lot of kids' suggestions. Yeah, me. a lot of kids' suggestions, but I, I would love to know, too, what you want to paint with the go-backs. And, uh, and we'll go from there. So let's say sayonara. We'll see you next time. Um, enjoy this next week. Enjoy St. Patrick's Day. I doubt you're going to live stream on St. Patrick's Day, but no, I mean, be energy. prepared for a surprise. You never know. Never know. So at any rate, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much. And we're signing out. We're signing out. Bye. Bye. We don't need to edit anything this time.